Hey there, welcome back to another episode of Celerity Technology. Today we're going to be looking at the RGB DAC demo that I promised a few days ago. In the front you can see we have a digital RGB strip um, by Corsair which is running at 5 volt. And then in the foreground we have my, um, my just random analog RGB strips that I cut to length. I don't really want to do a whole lot of um, strips coming off, you know, that'd be 8 times whatever. But um, anyway, these are both being controlled by a Corsair Lightino Pro and that's plugged into my laptop so I can show different modes. I do know that um, viewing LEDs um, on a screen that's taken through camera might not always be the best way to view them. So I'm going to take um, make my little diffusers right here so you can see see a little kind of better and ideas courtesy of uh, my friend Zadi. Um, so this this mode that we're currently in is called Spiral Rainbow. This is called Rainbow Wave. This is just rainbow. There's a lot of rainbows apparently. Color shift. Color pulse. This one's called color wave. Alternating random colors. Visor, which is always kind of a neat effect. Rain. Static color, and I'll go through a couple of static colors. So we have white, red, kind of a yellowish, green, um, turquoise, and blue, purple, and white. And then I'll go back to everybody's favorite color, rainbow. <sighs> Sometimes I wonder if people like this as much as my daughter likes it, but um, it's generally. The only thing I do like about the rainbow wave um, kind of patterns is it does kind of give give you a demonstration of um, what digital RGB can do as opposed to having everything be the same color. Um, but anyway, I wanted to run through a little bit of um, of these um, now that I have them uh, connected and working to show you. Um, so they're being currently... I, I made my own... Um, these are actually um, fan extenders and this is actually a fan splitter because I don't have any ex extenders so I'm still working on the, on the I'm figuring out what to, how to power this initially I was thinking about doing this, this fan header because they're easier to source they come in black and um, but th that would require me making kind of custom cables and I'm thinking about actually moving to a, um, a floppy drive header because even though floppy drives are dead <laughs> there's no no more there's no more floppy drive header on the motherboard but pretty much every power supply still comes with one and they're fairly easy to source and it would be one less headache that I'd have to worry about and allow me to quicker deploy these uh, less lower the cost a little bit um, and um, th that's why I'm kind of thinking about it the only issue is most of them come in white you can get limited supply of black but I mean it's again something that's not used a whole lot you know if I buy you know, a thousand headers, you know, that would probably last me a while. Um, so I don't really have to worry about, you know, end of life. And you can still get a floppy drive cable anywhere. But anyway, um, so this device has um, two inputs, um, motherboard and also um, the uh, Corsair. These are both inputs. You can only use one at a time. You, I also have two outputs, which you can actually use both at the same time if you wanted to. This is for a... Um, Corsair out. Um, I'm actually bridging these two, so the signal's coming in um, using four channels right here. Each DAC does have four channels, and the signal is in, sent out here and received by this um, one, which I have the cable tucked under. And I'm actually using this old PCB to hold it in place because trying to get all these wires to, to stay was a pain in the butt to begin with. Um, so let's see. So I have four analog channels right here and I have those headers connected. I mentioned in my last video that um, I'm going to go with these female with the male coupler. I think that's just kind of the best way to do it. 
Um, but I might actually switch design and just go floppy that way. I don't have to worry about um, uh, supplying a cable or, and it will require a custom cable to be made, which is less than fun. So this way people can source their own cable. They probably have one already in their, like my modular EVGA bag um, has one. I've looked up quite a few other different power supplies and yes, they come with them um, that are modular. They usually, but unfortunately they use Molex, but you can still source some, um, some cables for like, you know, three to seven bucks or whatever for um, an adapter that, you know, sleeved. Um, so uh, another thing to consider, a lot of people that are interested in this video saw my, um, my water clean loop with the Thermaltake RGB Pacific fittings. And in that one, I actually, it's slightly different in this fact that I put um, different headers on because uh, the um, thermal take fittings do use um, fan headers, which is another reason why I'm thinking about switching because, oh God, you know, I could see people getting confused because all five of these would be in a row if I put fan headers for them. So I think I might do a few batches, um, uh, maybe, maybe to start off with do a few um, for the thermal take fittings, but I think most people want to use these for um, other purposes. I don't know how many people actually have those RGB fittings, but um, this board is actually designed um, to be to be swappable between 12 and 5 volt, but um, it is using a solder jumper, which allows me to put more current. Um, it's also less of a chance that somebody could switch a header around um, and screw something up and also takes up less room on the board. So, um, yeah, um, these unless you know how to solder, you know, um, you'll have to actually get get the 5 volt or 12 volt version because here's a solder jumper right here. So just switching that out, um, removing the solder from this point and adding it to that point is how I um, switched everything out for to get my fittings to work. Um, because if you run 12 volt to a 5 volt um, RGB device, it will fry it. Um, so I might do a, do, the, do a few of those. Um, let me know if you're interested. I'm planning on uh, maybe producing a few of these using these fan headers. Um, just to you know, get some out there. Um, these things actually. Um, uh, so when it comes to, I've been learning a lot about um, producing um, PCBs, manufacturing, and it's quite fascinating. Um, but um, when with each of these, I actually had to manually do them myself. Um, manually um, uh, place all the parts. Um, go through with this. Um, uh, basically kind of like a heat gun uh, to melt the solder and uh, to reflow solder and um, have all the components stick to it. Um, then the all the through hole devices like this required me to um, uh, solder from the back side. Um, and so these all take time. It, it's A machine can do this in a fraction of a second. So I might sell a couple of these. Um, they're going to be more expensive than what I um, than, than what I would sell a full production run. Um, and then maybe once I, um, for the ones I sold, maybe I will uh, send a, a production run when and if I ever get that far. So the idea is I will uh, do a few of these kind of beta types and sell them uh, to the, to whatever spec the user wants. And then um, I'll only do maybe, I, I can only do probably about a few of them, maybe four or five. Um, again, these take a lot of time to do all this and it's it's not really worth my time. It's more of me wanting to get some out there so I can have more people test. I already have a, a couple of people that are beta testing for me on various platforms. So, you know, this works on Gigabyte. It works on MSI, Asus. And so um, I, we haven't seen really any problem that we haven't figured out something for. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. Give me your opinion about the floppy drive. I mean, I will have to sort. The connector will most likely be white. I can try to source uh, like a black one, but um, you know, luckily with the floppy drive connector, the I can get black connectors easily that um, go to the white header, and that will cover up most of the white header. So the white, white being white was my biggest concern, and. Now, these PCBs are actually white um, just because every generation I try to switch the color. The production run will um, will be black. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to comment. I'd love your feedback. Um, I'm probably going to make about four of these. Um, uh, they're, they're not going to be cheap. Um, and uh, the production run will, will definitely be cheaper because I don't have to sit there and place each one. And to be honest, I don't like doing it. It's It gets boring after a while. Um, but um, yeah, and I might include a production run um, 
in the future when and if I get there. So let me know your comments, and um, I will um, try to help in any way. Also, feel free to subscribe if you want more content like this. Thank you very much.